Welcome! My name is Kasper van Lissa and I'm an assistant professor of methods and statistics at Utrecht University in the Netherlands. Today I will record a short tutorial on how to estimate a structural equation model in M plus using R. So we're going to use the R package M plus automation to control M plus directly from R. There are several reasons one might want to do this. And the first reason is if you want to run models in batch. In M plus you would have to write each syntax file separately by hand and then run it manually. But in R you can run a whole batch of models just changing one thing at a time. For example, if you have one basic model but 10 dependent variables, it is very easy to run the same model for all 10 dependent variables. Or if you want to do a latent class analysis or another type of categorical latent variable model, you can estimate the model for one up until however many classes and extract the results from all of those models in one go. The second reason you might want to do this is because R has superior tabulation and plotting functionalities as compared to M+. So if you want to make publication ready graphs, it's much easier to do so in R. The third reason you might want to use R to control M plus is if you want to perform some downstream calculations on the output from M plus. And this is actually why I first started using R because I had conducted an analysis in M plus and then I wanted to compute a base factor for that model. And the base factor calculations were only implemented in R. So at that point, I was first introduced to the M plus automation package, which I then used to calculate my base factors. Now, many years down the road, I've actually made contributions to the M plus automation package and I've made other packages myself that are very useful for tabulating and plotting uh, structural equation models, which I'm going to show you a little bit of as well. And the fourth reason a person might want to use R in combination with M plus is to create a dynamically generated document. R allows you to make these so-called R markdown documents uh, that is a different way of working from the traditional approach. Traditionally, people would write a paper in one piece of software and conduct their analysis in another piece of software and then copy and paste the results from one software to the other. If you create an R markdown file, that file interleaves the prose of your paper with the code for your analysis. And you just press a button to run all analyses and the results are automatically inserted into your paper. This saves a lot of time from copy and pasting. So this is one final reason why you might want to use M plus in conjunction with R. So the reason I'm recording this tutorial today is because I got a question from Ella Daniel in Israel, and she wants to estimate models in M plus using R, extract the results and put them into meaningful tables. We can do that. Let's have a look. So here we see the RStudio integrated development environment, which is a really nice program to use R from. And I have an empty R script here on the left. I have a console window here down below, which allows me to interface directly with R. Uh, I have my environment, which is objects loaded in memory up here in the top right. And I have my file structure down here in the bottom right. So the first thing I'm going to do is to load some data. Now you might have your own data, maybe they're in an Excel sheet, maybe an SPSS or Stata format, it doesn't matter. Uh, for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to use a standard data set that is included with the LaFan R package, which is also used for structural equation modeling. And the reason I'm doing that is that so you can replicate this tutorial at home. Now, if you want to work with your own data, I recommend that you Google how to load X type of data file into R and you will find a short script that you can use to get your data into R. So what I'm going to do is create an object called DF, short for data frame. That's just the name of the object. And into it, I'm putting a data set from the library Lavan, namely the Holzinger Swineford data. So if I execute this line, a new object is created in my environment. The object is called df and it contains 301 observations of 15 variables. If we click this arrow, we can have a look at the variable names. So we see an ID number, the sex of the participant, age, etc. We see school, grade, and then we have these nine indicator variables, 
which code for three latent variables. So we're going to create a confirmatory factor analysis model uh, to represent those indicators as latent variables. So if you were doing this with your own data, you would replace this line with the line used to load your data into R. It is also useful at this stage to load some libraries. Libraries are R packages that contain functions that we're going to use. So I'm going to use library M plus automation. I'm also going to use my own library, tidy SEM, which is used for tabulating and plotting structural equation models. And I'll load the library Lavan, which is where I'm getting the data set from. And if I execute these three lines of code, I can start using functions that are included in those packages. Which also means that I no longer have to refer to the Holzinger Swineford data as an object that lives inside of the Lavan package. I can just call it like this now. So before I start building the structural equation model, I want to show you two of the core functions in the M plus automation package that we're going to use. One is called M plus object and the other is called M plus modeler. If we look at this function and select it, we can press F1, which will open the help file for that function. A different way of doing this is by running question mark M plus object in the console that will also open the help file. And then in the help file, we can see how we use this function. So here it says this function creates an M plus model object. In R, the object holds all the sections of an M plus input file plus some extra R ones. So let's go down and here we see the usage of that function. We see that this function has arguments. Specifically, the function has a title argument that corresponds to the title section of M plus syntax. It also has a data argument corresponding to the data section of M plus input, a variable argument corresponding to the variable section of the M plus input. And basically all of these capitalized arguments represent eponymous sections of the M plus syntax. So if you are able to work with M plus, then you'll know what information goes into which of these arguments. We also see a few extra arguments that are only for people who use this function in R. The only one of these additional arguments that I'm going to discuss today is the R data argument, because this argument is used to pass data from R to M plus. So this is going to be important. Now, the second function that I want to introduce is M plus modeler. If we select this function and press F1, it opens the help file. And we can see that this function is used to create, run and read M plus models. So basically, we're going to use M plus object to define our syntax and M plus modeler to evaluate that syntax. So let's create a model. And we're going to use the help file for M plus object as guidance. So I'm going to expand this a little bit to get some more space. And we're just going to start with the first argument. We're going to give our model a title. Title is CFA analysis. And here I put the actual title of the model between quotation marks so that it's recognized as an R argument. And that's it for the title argument. Now I can specify a data argument, but I actually don't have to for the type of analysis that I'm going to do. I can specify a variable argument, but I also don't have to. A define argument, don't have to. Actually, I can go all the way down and specify the model argument now if I want. So that's what I'm gonna do. Model equals two quotation marks, and between them, I'm going to write my model syntax. So what do I want? Well, I want three factors, one factor for each subsequent group of three indicators in this data set. So if you're familiar with the Holzinger Swineford data, you'll know that the first factor is a, a test that measures visual intelligence. The second one is a test that measures textual understanding. And the third is a test that measures students speed for performing different intelligence tests. And now I'm going to use standard M plus syntax to define these latent variables. 
visual by x1 through x3, semicolon, textual by x4 through x6, semicolon, and speed by x7 through x9, semicolon. So this is how you would usually specify your model in M+. I'm going to add one additional argument, and that is the output argument. And I'm going to ask for the standardized output, and that's it. So if you look at this, it will seem very familiar to just standard M plus input files. The only difference is that the uh, arguments are now between quotation marks, because R requires that. The next thing that I'm going to specify is R data. So for this, I'm going to say R data equals DF. But if I just feed it the whole data frame, there will be a lot of variables that are not being used in this model. And that can cause problems. So what I'm going to do is to just submit a subselection of the original data frame. And I can actually do that here. DF analyze is DF. And then I'm going to say paste x one through nine. If I execute that, you will see that that corresponds to all of the variable names that I'm going to use. So if I do execute this code, I get a new object, DF analyze, that only contains the nine indicator variables. And I'm going to pass that to the M plus object function, like so. So all that's left to do is for me to assign the result of this function to a new object. I will call it mod, short for model. And then I can select this code and run it. You will see that a new object is created called mod. And this contains basically all the arguments I just specified plus empty arguments for the remaining sections of M plus input. So the next step is that I'm going to run this model. So I'm creating a new object for the results. I'll call it res. And into that new object, I'm putting the output of the M plus modeler function. Let's see in the help file what arguments this function needs. So the first argument it needs is an object. Well, that's going to be this mod object. And the second thing is it needs either a data out or a model out argument. Here you can name the file into which the syntax will be created. So I'm going to specify model out and I'll just call it cfa.imp, an input file for M plus. And I'm going to specify that I want to run this model. And to do so, I have to say run equals one L. L means it's an integer number. Okay, so now I can actually select this and run it. And you can see that the model was written to the file cfa.imp. The data was written to a new data file. The model was run and the result was read. And now you can see that I have a new object called res, which contains a lot of information. So let's have a look at the results of our analysis. The first thing that we might want to do is to look at a summary table of the model fit indices. And to do this, we use the function summary table, also from M plus automation, and we can just provide it with the argument res, so we can run it on our output. And if I execute that, you will see the model title, its log likelihood, the number of parameters, the AIC, the corrected AIC, the BIC, and the RMSEA estimate. Maybe we want some other fit indices, and we can specify that with the keep calls argument. So for example, we might ask for the title, the log likelihood, the number of parameters, the AIC, the BIC, and then we want the CFI, TLI, the RMSEA estimate, and we want the SRMR. This is a pretty typical selection of fit indices. So let's have a look. And we can see that we get them all as requested. If we're interpreting these fit statistics, um, you'll note that the TLI is below the acceptable threshold of 0.90. 
and the RMSEA is above the acceptable threshold of 0 0.08. So the model fit is not very good, but that's all right for now. Now, just with a mind to perhaps using this table in your own publication, it might be useful to put this summary table into an object and then store that as a table. So let's try that. We'll call this tab results and we'll assign the output of summary table to the tab results. Then you see that we get a new object called tab results. We can have a look at it. It's just that output table as a table. And the nice thing about that is that we can save it, for example, as a spreadsheet. For that, we would use the function write.csv. CSV is a standard spreadsheet format that can be opened in Excel, for example. So we're going to write tab results to tab results.csv. And one important thing is that we don't want any row names. Otherwise, all of the rows are pushed one over by the column of row names. So we set row names to false. So if I execute this and I look into my files browser, you can see that the newest modified file is tabresults.csv and I could just open that into any spreadsheet program. So that partially answers Ella Daniel's question of how to create tables. At least now I've shown you how to make a table for the model fit indices. But what about the results of the analysis? To extract the results of the analysis, you can do different things. First, I will show you where to find the results of your analysis. If we take that analysis object called res, we can look inside of the object using the dollar sign. So if I write res dollar sign, I can see everything inside of it. One of the things inside of it is a results object. If I use the dollar sign to look inside of that, I can see all of the sections of M plus output, including the parameters. And if I use the dollar sign to look inside of the parameters, I can see the unstandardized, the R squared, the standard YX standardized, etc. So usually people report the unstandardized and the YX standardized parameters. And there's actually a convenience function to extract these. That is in my package tidysem, and it's called table results. So I can use the function table results to get the results of the object res. Let's have a look. So what we see here is that this gives us a table with the label of the parameter, the est sig, that is the estimate with significance asterisk attached to it, the standard error, the p-value, and a confidence interval, which is required by the APA manual. But you can get all of the existing columns from the output. For example, we can get all of the standardized coefficients as well. For that, I'm going to open the help file of this function. So here you can see that this function has a columns argument, and there we can specify the name of columns that we want to retain. So in this case, I'm going to customize that a little bit and I'm going to ask for the following columns. I want the label. I want the est sig. I also want the standard error. I want the conf int. And I also want the standardized estimate. So I'll ask for est sig std, the se std, and the conf int std. So if I run this, then you will see that I get all of the requested tables. And the reason that I chose to drop the p-value is because it's already implied by the significance asterisks in my output. So I can do the same thing that I did for the model fit indices. I can create a new table. I'll call it tab parameters. I can see now that perhaps the name tab results was not that well chosen, but it's okay, I'll just carry on. So I'll create a new table called tab parameters with the output of the function table results. And that creates a new object. We can look inside of that object and then we see that indeed this has given us all of the output of our analysis. And I could just write this to a spreadsheet 
as I had previously done with the model fit information. So actually I'll copy and paste this command and I'll just use it to write tab parameters to a spreadsheet called tab parameters. Like so. And predictably that creates a new file with my parameters. Now Ella also asked how to merge parameter tables from different models. And that's a little bit tricky because different models usually contain different parameters. So you're going to have to do some data wrangling in R. I'll show you a useful function for this purpose. You can use the merge function. And a merge function allows you to take two tables, both created by my function table results, and to merge them by one of the names in those tables. For example, you could use the label column to merge parameter estimates from one model with those from another model. But the way to do this really depends on what kind of models you're running and how they differ from each other. So it's hard for me to give an applied example uh, without knowing the specific context. I want to do one last thing, and that is to show you how to plot this model. Of course, it's possible to get a rudimentary figure in M+, but in R we can do much better. And for that, we're going to use the function graphsem from my package tidysem. So the graphsem function takes different arguments. For example, we can feed it the output of our M plus analysis, res. So now we can pass the object res to the function graphsem in order to get a rudimentary plot for our model. So looking at this plot, uh, we see that it's far from perfect. Some of the labels here are overlapping and also for a CFA, it will be customary to have all of the indicators on one row and all of the latent variables on another row. Thankfully, it's very easy to um, specify custom layout. For that, we use the get layout function. So here I'm creating a new object called lay into which I'm putting the results of the get layout function. I've changed the font size slightly so that you can see that this kind of looks like the layout that I want to see. I want an empty cell, then I want the object visual, then another empty cell, another empty cell, then the object textual, empty cell, empty cell speed, empty cell, and then all of the nine indicators. And together, this figure makes up two rows. So I'll put this into the object called lay. And then when I call graphsem, I can specify layout equals lay. And it will look a lot better. So this is almost publication ready, but we can change a few other things. For example, we can change the angle at which arrows are connected to objects. If we increase that angle, then all of the nodes will be connected at the top, which looks a little bit neater. And we can also say fix coord is true, which forces the aspect ratio to be fixed. So now it looks a little bit neater. The labels are still overlapping, but that's just because the plotting window is too small. If we zoom in, then the graph looks really nice. And we could actually just save this to a file uh, and use it in our paper. So let's try that. First, I'm going to put this plot into an object called P. And then I'm going to use library ggplot2 because this plot is a ggplot. And because it is, we can use the function ggsave to write it to a file. So I'm going to create a file called uh, figure1.png. Into that file, I'm going to write the plot P. The device is a PNG device, and then I can specify the size of the plot. So I'm going to say width equals 9 and height equals 4, and by default that is measured in inches. And I'm going to execute this. Let's have a look at the resulting PNG file. Not bad, I can just stick that in my paper. Finally, I want to show you how easy it is to conditionally customize this plot. In order to do so, we no longer use the graphsem function, but we use the preparegraph function. And the preparegraph function allows us to um, modify the plot 
before plotting it. And we're going to use library dplyr, which gives us the so-called pipe operator. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the input for the graph generated by prepare graph and then pipe it through several functions to edit the graph itself. So we're going to say pipe this into a function that's going to change the line type of fixed edges and the fixed edges are in this case the factor loadings that are fixed to unity for this model to be identified. So we're going to change the line type of the fixed edges to uh, line type equals two. So there will be dashed lines. And we'll also change the line type of the covariances to be line type equals three. Let's switch it up a little bit. And maybe we want to make the covariances transparent because perhaps they're less important for our paper. Then we could say alpha, which controls the transparency of covariances is 0.5. So after making all of these modifications, we're going to give a command to plot the result and then we'll assign the resulting plot to object P so we can save it to a file. Let's execute this code. So now if we want to see the plot, we have to execute the object P. And this is what it looks like. So indeed, we have some transparent dotted lines for the covariances. We have dashed lines for the fixed edges and the rest looks the same as before. Now let's say that we don't want to see all of the variances in this model. That's also easy to change. We could say hide variances and then we'll add that to our pipe. So let's run this again. Let's look at the object P. And now we have a graph without variances, which saves a lot of space. So again, we can take the plot P and just save it to a PNG file. And if we then look at the PNG file, we see our same plot back. So that's great. So hopefully this answers your question and hopefully this has encouraged you to use M plus automation to automate your M plus analysis from R and then benefit from the tabulation and plotting functionality that R has to offer. Thank you very much and see you in the next one.